Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Hello there, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am really excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. This one is gonna be at MXSDC 2020 and it is a solo jazz competition. So let's get right into it and afterward I'm gonna tell you exactly how I judge this type of competition. Let's do it. Here we go. Let's get down to business. This is going to be a battle, folks. Yes. To your surprise, this is really the tempo I look at the most in judging someone. Right now, the dancer I see that is not as uncomfortable as everybody else, the gentleman in the black suit. It's not rushed. Yeah, it's really hard subtle, be cool, and to actually mirror the music at this tempo. It takes real restraint. Here we go. Exactly, exactly, she was ready.
this band is extremely attentive to the dancers' movements, and I really appreciate that. They're working together.
we all skate. Here we go. Yes! <coughs> Great job, guys. I tell you what, folks. I will tell you what. It is hard being a judge because people who are judges do not get the benefit of the doubt like comedians. Comedians can tell the truth and everyone laughs, right? Because you know what comedy is. It's truth and pain mixed together, right? It's the truth of a situation, but we generally prefer it when it's someone else's pain. We can simply vicariously identify with it and say, yeah, I, I would hate to be in that situation. When I judge these kind of competitions that are solo like this, I have, to re I have to tell the truth. The truth will set you free, folks, but it will first tick you off a little bit. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm slightly disappointed in... Uh, Everybody's dancing. Whoa. <laughs> How can I be disappointed? Everybody could dance. Everybody could move on rhythm. But not everybody could do vintage solo jazz dancing well. Well, Jamin, you just can't say that. It's solo jazz. Yeah, it says solo jazz. They're playing swing music. And I suspect that most of the dancers are trying to dance vintage solo jazz. Here's the problem. And this is a problem that I understand as an outsider coming into swing. I was a professional hip hop dancer for 25 years. I did modern dance, I did classical ballet, I did tap, I did all those different dance styles. And the one thing that was separate from swing the thing that made swing so unique and solo jazz movement in particular was the isolation of the upper body. It's not so much what you can do. It's about the restraint of what you choose to do. So one of the things that I like about vintage solo dancing is it, that is, it's simple. It's not too much movement, right? And I think the hardest thing that I watch that was hard to watch that I think all of the dancers uh, suffered from. This is my critical analysis because I'm, I'm coming at this from the solo jazz dance perspective, vintage. I'm not talking about 1960s Bob Fosse. I'm not talking about modern stuff. I'm just looking at it from that lens. But when I look at this, I think the hardest part that these dancers can, can understand is there must be a balance between the improvisation and the craftsmanship, and it's not equal. It's not. Here's what I mean. Craftsmanship are basically moves that have already been created by vintage dancers. And when we're doing solo jazz dancing, it's got to be 70-30. Show me movements that are respectable for the time period. So if I strip the filter on my video and made it black and white, I can't tell the difference between the vintage time and our modern time. If I put all these dancers in black and white, I can tell you something's not right here. This isn't a vintage clip. I would sniff it out and say, ah, that's someone who's modern. They got a little bit of hip hop influence. They got a little bit of house influence. I could see that. And so as a judge, what I would say is, you know, the, I can only judge now based on the ones who were the closest to simply looking vintage. Not necessarily on how well they could dance in rhythm, not how well their timing was with their sets, but I just simply have to see the most constructive, objective perspective, which is why does it look vintage and why doesn't it look vintage? Because dancing and not looking vintage in a solo jazz competition totally takes me out, because I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer's dancer. I do multiple genres. So when I see it, I got to first look to see who can respect the genre of the time. Yes, you can bring in other things. 
Yes, you can bring in Bob Fosse influence. Yes, you can do some weird quirky movements. Even the original dancers did that. But it wasn't at the expense of the overall aesthetic. What makes it look so low jazz? And that has to do with the upper body moving less than the lower body. <sighs> Rant finished. So my number one dancer on the slow set, this is where I like to start. I did not even prefer the choices of the movements. I didn't prefer the rhythms of this dancer. But I loved the fact that he got and he understood certain parts of his body need to be isolated while the other parts move so that the eyes can see exactly what you want them to focus on, right? Not just everything moving. This dancer uh, was wearing the yellow shirt. Don't know his name. He had the, the, the body was the most quiet and I could appreciate his solo, authentic jazz movements from his waist down. I could say, ah, Tachiani. I could say, boogie forward. Ah, I could see that. I could see cakewalking sometimes. I could see some fishtails, right? The focus is on the lower part of the body. And on occasion, that 30%, you embellish it with your own personal style and ingenuity with your upper body. It can't be equal and it can't be a lopsided or it will simply not look vintage. That's the truth. That's not my opinion. That's just what it is. People will define vintage different ways, but I guarantee you, you can't take away from that idea that the upper body is moving less than the, than the uh, lower body because it was a tap influence. That's just the way it was. So he's first. <laughs> That's weird because I didn't even prefer his dancing, but I have to look at it fairly as a judge and go, he was vintage. My second favorite when it was slow was the gentleman in the black suit. Again, I didn't prefer the, the particular sets he was doing, but I could see vintage steps. I could see the isolation of the body. And if I put him in a silhouette, I might be tempted for like three seconds to believe it's a vintage clip. I can't say that for everybody else. I can't say that. So do with that what you would like, but that's what it's like when you have to be a judge. You've got to tell the truth and you got to give proper context of objective things and opinionated things or subjective things. And I just simply break that up, guys. 70-30 is my rule. Once I start edging up towards 60-40 or 50-50, I look again like a hip-hop dancer. I've been doing that forever. And that's what, that's what breaks it for me. When it came to the fast, the one that got me most interested and I could almost be taken back to the 1930s was it was the follower the girl who had the blue with the white polka dots right she was killing it when it was fast when it was charleston she didn't move her upper body too much i almost thought some of them were break dancing not because they went on the floor i thought they were literally top rocking the same stuff that we would do in top rock should look different if it's vintage. They didn't look the same doing that, right? And again, the person who got first for me when it was fast was the gentleman in the black suit. Go back and watch it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Why it looks vintage and why sometimes it doesn't look vintage. But that's my opinion, guys. But that's also my critical thinking eye from 30 years of dance experience to be able to isolate certain dance forms and styles within certain periods. You've got to be able to know why it looks a certain way for that time period and why it doesn't. Ingenuity is in both time periods. We got it in jazz, that's where it started, with authentic jazz, and we also have it in modern hip-hop or street dancing, whatever we want to call it. It's the same spirit of creativity and improvisation within your own body to the music, call response. But it looks different in every decade. So we can't just blur the lines, just do whatever you want to do, or you can't identify what the dance even is. I'm ranting again, sorry. <laughs> That's literally what I, what I have to say. Or we will look up in five years and new people who come along will say, oh, that stuff back then looks dumb. No, wait a minute, that's what it is. We don't, if you don't like it, don't change it. You know, just do something else. Don't try to change it. Add value to it, but don't say a Tachyani's dumb. Don't say a Boogie Forward's dumb. Those are, those are the moves, guys. Those are the basics. So you can do that 70-30. You automatically get my props, automatically get my attention. You automatically get my respect as a craftsman and an artist because I want to be able to see both. 
So anyway, what do you guys think? What did you think about this competition? Who was your favorite? Am I out of my mind? Does my 30 years of dance experience mean nothing to you? <laughs> I don't mind. But that's what civilization is about. It's the intelligent management of human emotion. And I love to talk about ideas and why. So if you like doing that and you're bold enough to put your ideas out there, let me know in the comment section who you thought should have won this competition. If you guys want to understand a little bit more of solo jazz stuff and why it looks solo jazz, I would encourage you to take some of my free courses. I highlight most of the old solo jazz movements. I break them down and why so that you can have proper context to be able to add your unique fingerprint once you understand the parameters that are there to help you be respectful for the art and identify um, with the style to be able to easily move in and out of that style, right? So if you like that, go ahead and jump in and get those free courses. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I really enjoyed it. Tops hat off to all the dancers who put themselves out there. You have to have a little bit of fear to get up in front of an audience. But these dancers had a little bit more courage than fear. And I respect them for just doing that, getting out there. And then you got to deal with me because I'm not the kind of judge that's just going to sit there and, you know, keep my opinion to myself. If I was there, I would say the same thing if someone asked me. And they'd probably go home crying or, you know, complain to the organizer that I just told them simply the truth. <laughs> right? About my opinion or history. So that's the way it is, guys. If you like that, if you want to get better, if you want to work on the dance, you want to be respectful, keep working hard. Always get context. Always ask questions. Always get context. And I hope this video was helpful for you. Shout out again to all these dancers. See you guys in the next video or one of my classes online. Take care.